Let's have a closer look at the new Pagani Utopia today. The Utopia is a special one. Some say it's the worst Pagani ever, some say it's the best Pagani ever. So let's have a closer look at it from a technical point of view. Pagani sticks to their traditional concept with a carbon fiber tub, which is now 10% stiffer, a metal frame at the front and metal frame at the back. The car has a 6 liter V12 B turbo engine from Mercedes that we already know from the previous model, the Huayra Roadster BC. The engine now has 864 horsepower and 1100 newton meters of torque. Pagani claims to use four intercoolers for the engine, but the first question when you open the hood is, where are they? The Mercedes engine has the turbochargers sitting outside. So also the exhaust system runs on the outside of the engine bay and underneath the suspension. That means that also the air intakes for the engine are outside. And Pagani came up with a new design to have two very nicely integrated, almost hidden intakes. We can see the narrow intake that's mounted to the engine cover and then connects to the air filter box below. After the air went through the turbocharger, it flows through the air water radiator on top of each bank and then flows into the engine. So that's a so-called indirect system. So we don't cool the charged air directly with air, which would require large air intakes for the intercoolers. Instead, we cool the charged air with a low temperature water cycle that includes radiators in the front bumper either side. So altogether, that makes four radiators. But that's something we already know from the previous models. New about the Utopia is the transversal menu gearbox from Extract, which we can see at the back. Also at the back, we can see the lighter titanium exhaust with ceramic coating, but without mufflers. And we can see how Pagani is using the tail light area to actually extract more air from the engine bay, just like Audi did in LMP1. Impressive is that Pagani could still manage to offer luggage space at the sides, although the engine is now turbocharged. Since the luggage is close to the exhaust and turbocharger, it could get pretty warm here. The outside exhaust with a catalytic converter below is also the reason for the relatively wide tube frame, which then results in relatively short wishbones. These create a bit more track width change under bump and rebound, which increases tire heating and hence tire wear. But since this is a street car, the effect is very small. Which brings us to the front package. Also here, everything is very similar to the Huayra. We have a double wishbone suspension and a large water radiator in the center. If Pagani's had a roof scoop in the past, the hot air of the radiator was diverted to the sides to keep the center flow clean. But here, we have one large outlet in the middle. That also means that the two air intakes behind the cockpit might get some warm and disturbed air. But again, it's a street car and the effect isn't that big. When looking at the front suspension, you could think that the Utopia has front wheel drive as well. But this is actually the front brake cooling. It's just integrated so well that it looks a bit like a huge drive shaft. You can see here that the steering rack is in front of the front axle to have enough space for the pedal box, which then requires the brake calipers to be behind the front axle. Brake cooling goes to the center of the brake disc because the disc is venting the hot air outboard and sucking cold air from the center. The rims now have a modular element which vents air outboard to improve brake cooling. So as we can see, the tight front package doesn't really allow for any luggage space, so it's a good thing to have space at the back. Interesting here is that the front hood is held by a simple single hinge that is integrated into the front design. Previous Paganis had a nose design because the large center hinge, which was sitting higher, was covered underneath. The Utopia has the hinge further down and doesn't need the nose design anymore. So let's look at overall aerodynamics. The active front flaps of the Huayra are gone now, but the large air intakes for high and low temperature circuits are stayed. The outlet is close to the windscreen like before on the Zonda and the wheel arches can extract air through the top and back. The element in front of the rear axle is suggesting to pull air in there to feed the diffuser, but it's actually closed and really just a design element. The rear shows a gentle diffuser with small strakes to keep the tire rack outside. The openings for the hot air are relatively small, but as we saw before, hot air can also exit through the tail light area. So all in all, we can say that the Utopia keeps the traditional Pagani concept with a carbon fiber monocoque in the middle and metal frames at front and rear. 
They kept the Huayrai engine and cooling concept, as well as the intakes, but combined them with Zonda exits. The result is that the Utopia has less active error elements, but now a manual gearbox and the side section is redesigned. If that is enough to ask for double the price of the previous Huayra, can only answer future buyers. All 99 cars are sold out and can expect a future value increase. See you at the next video.